We are going to mesh this model. We'll use non-conformal assemblies to mesh it. We will also use automatic case check tool and see how to utilize it. We will modify the shape of the heatsink fins and use hollow blocks to modify the computational domain. Let's now create the first mesh. <laughs> Click on this icon. So we'll just use the default option to generate a mesh first. We can see the number of elements that have been created. Display mesh, cut plane. Horizontal screen select. Left click. And this is how the mesh looks like. Look at the mesh in the package. So you can see that the mesh in this section, these, these clusters are formed because of the small cells in this region. And these mesh then extend outwards. These small cells are trying to resolve the shoulder balls. And these small cells, as they bleed out of that specific region, leads to the formation of this kind of bleeding mesh. Mesh bleeding can be restricted by creating, by generating a non conformal mesh. So, to generate a non conformal mesh, first we have to create assemblies. We'll click on the AGP board. Right click and go to create an assembly. We'll create an assembly which will have the AGP in it. Double click on the assembly. Name it as AGP assembly. Done. Similarly, create another assembly for the bridge. We'll create a group for the DDR ramps. We'll select the DDR ramps and place them here. Use the DDR group and then create another assembly. You can see another DDR assembly has been created. Now let's go and activate the non conformal meshing. Double click on DDR assembly, go to meshing and select mesh separately. Provide the slack setting. Typically provide a non zero slack setting so that you can prevent the non conformal interfaces from touching the faces and sides of different objects. As soon as you complete it, you will see that the DDR assembly has been converted into pink. That means this is a non conformal assembly. Similarly, now we will activate the non conformal meshing for AGP block. After creating non conformal assemblies, it's always a good idea to use the productivity tools to do an automatic case check. For using that, go to macros, productivity. 
for using that, go to macros, productivity validation, automatic case check. Click on the mesh generation icon again and generate the mesh. We can see that the number of elements have changed now. You can see now we don't have any bleeding region in the mesh. And now if we create a cut plane through the heat sink, you can see how the heat sink has been created. But We have this issue over here. Where outside of the heatsink itself, you still have mesh which is mimicking the heatsink region. So this bleeding of the mesh needs to be fixed. Create an assembly for the heatsink. Use the same slack settings. And done. Now we have a few small gaps. We'll orient the model in the X fed plane. So let's zoom in. You can see this small gap between the heat sink and the fluid exterior. This is the maximum Z, and this small section is the fluid gap. So we will make some changes in the non-conformal meshing slack settings so that this gap is properly resolved. We'll change the Z to 0 0.97 from 0 0.5. Now I can see. So overlapping. Again, go to macros, productivity, validation, automatic case check tool. If you check for assembly intersections now, check for each one. So now it shows that these two assemblies are intersecting each other. ATP assembly and HS assembly. So we have to fix this before we generate the mesh. In order to fix this assembly intersection problem, we will create nesting. Select the ATP assembly. And drag and drop it into the HS assembly. Now, if we go back and recheck it, there are no problems. And the measure will then generate the mesh based on its priority within this system. Let's generate the mesh again. We can see there is no bleeding mesh section over here. As we have seen before, while we were building this model, we can use assembly offset option to move different components inside an assembly or the whole assembly itself within the domain. Let's select the HS assembly, go to definition and Offset it by 15 millimeters in the y direction. Done. And you can see that the whole assembly moves together by 15 millimeters. In the meshing, we can also refine the meshing after the initial mesh has been generated. And we can use this maximum size and minimum gap values to refine the mesh.
you can use the load mesh to gen load the last mesh that has been generated. You can also change the maximum element sizes to a smaller value. Hit the minimum gap and generate the mesh again. And see how much the mesh changes. You can also add local refinement. So again, edit one of the assemblies, go to meshing. And rather than using global mesh control, you can specify local mesh control values over here. In fact, if only you want to change one or two control limits from the global mesh control settings, you can copy the global mesh control setting that will bring the global mesh values over here, and then you can specify only the sections that you want to change. And regenerate the mesh. There will be occasions where some part of the model is not meshed. And it will show an error at the bottom that a specific region has not been meshed. The easiest way to fix it is to change the priority. The component priorities can be changed by going to model edit priorities and here you can change the priority of individual system to a higher or lower number in this case if we change the board priority from nine to eight you can easily do that and go back and generate the mesh Every time you change priorities, you will have to regenerate the mesh. Once the mesh has been generated, check the quality. Look at the face alignment. Also look at the skewness in the system. Always check the volume. There should not be any mesh with negative cell volume. If that is the case, go back and change the meshing settings until you get a mesh with all positive volume. Let's add a fluid block, fill in specification, fluid. We'll change the display setting a little bit. Copy the fluid block. Translate it. We have two fluid blocks now. Select both of them. Copy again. Translate. So we have four fluid blocks now. Select them all together. Now I have created these fluid blocks intentionally to create intersections. So if we now go back to macros, productivity, validation, and automatic case check. So as you look at different objects, You can see these are orphan objects in the assembly which are intersecting with another assembly. The orphan object issue can be avoided by placing the orphan objects inside the heatsinks assembly. So we have an heatsink assembly which is intersecting with four orphan objects. And what we will do, we will just select these blocks and put them in the heatsink assembly. So now if you Check again, nothing will be reported. Let's generate the mesh again. Go to display. Select the volume mesh. And you can see that the heat sink geometry has been modified because 
we have specified that the sides or the corners of the heat sink is actually fluid. So now the solid has been modified by fluid and the heat sink corners are not solids anymore. Using this way, you can modify fin shapes using fluid blocks. Now let's go back and change the priority within the model to see how that affects the mesh generation. Go to model, edit priorities. Let's now increase the AGP heat sink model priority from 14 to 30. Generate the mesh again. And you can see that since the heat sink now has a higher priority than the blocks, the mesher has prioritized the heat sink meshing first, leading to the heat sink having all solid bodies. So in this case, the fin shape is not affected by the fluid blocks as the heat sink has a higher meshing priority than the fluid blocks. These are interesting options which are available in iSpec tools to modify the mesh as per the user's requirement. Let's now create another hollow block. Now you can see that the hollow block is not part of any assembly. Let's generate the mesh. As you can see now, iSpec did not mesh the region inside the hollow block. Only the surface of the block shows mesh because the inside of the assembly etc are meshed but the block itself that we created the hollow block that has not been meshed let's create a vertical plane you can see there is no mesh in this region here also you can see no mesh in this region so using a hollow block you can essentially change the shape of the computational domain. So in this workshop, we learned about non conformal assembly and how to use them to prevent mesh splitting. We refined the mesh locally. We used automatic case check control, used them for fixing meshing issues. We created nested assemblies, and we also used offsetting of an assembly to modify our mesh 